There's something that we didn't touch on this morning as we're putting it together. Brother Bill and Sister Ruth will share it with us at this time. Every heart and mind clear then. Brother Philip, open our service with prayer if you would. Page 525, 525. In the harvest field now ripen, there's a work for all to do. Hark the voice of God is calling to the harvest calling you. God is in it, and he'll not forget his own. Little is much when God is in it, labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown, and you can win it if you go in Jesus' name. When the conflict here is ended, and I We do officially at this time welcome each and every one to our morning worship hour uh, this morning. It's good to see each one of those smiling faces here this morning. 
And if you consider yourself a visitor, always remember Brother Thomas' rule of thumb. If you've ever been here one time, you're no longer a visitor. You're an honored guest, and we're just grateful and appreciative to have you in uh, our services this morning. And before I make any announcements, Sister Nora had something you and Jerry all want to do. Uh, yes, Eli and Paul's going to bring it up to you. Okay, go ahead then so this time. Oh, okay. Well, bring that. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Isn't that nice? Let me see. Oh. Folks, this says we love our pastor from the children at McEwen First Free Will Baptist Church. Lots of pictures. We love our pastor and things. Thank y'all. Let me get a little hug. Can I get a little hug? Two, two fine young men. We love y'all. I, my wife and I always love children. That's so nice. Boy, I, I appreciate that so very, very much. Boy, I'll, I'll treasure that for a long, long time, I'm sure. Thank you very, very much. And I thank Nora and Jeremy for what y'all do on Wednesday night. I think they had eight, was 18 kids Wednesday night. Great. They're doing it. They, and they're on a, a lot of program. I'm familiar with a great, great program. Oh, well, that's great. In the way of announcements, do remember, if you would, tonight there's a special service. starts at 5 o'clock. If you always have some coffee and a little donuts, uh, various cookie stuff downstairs, if you come earlier, uh, a little time of fellowship. But we start at 5 o'clock. Uh, Sister Amy and uh, uh, Brother Aaron will be here. There are missionaries to Liberia, and pretty shortly, you know, Liberia's been restricted from them. They had to come home because of Ebola, but now things have cleared up, and very shortly, it looks like they're going to be able uh, to go back. And I tell you, they're a fine young couple. I, I just love them so much in the Lord, and I pray just about every day for them in my daily prayers. And they, I'm telling you, you'll enjoy them being here tonight. And Sister Amy is quite a good. Piano playing song and a sing too, so we're gonna to get a sing tonight also. So be sure to be here tonight. Also remember Wednesday evening we're sort of back on our regular schedule. Uh, now through the holidays are sort of behind us. Wednesday night uh, at six thirty. You know this is our new time. We start at six thirty. Again, if you come early, we always have a little bit of a coffee and fellowship uh, for those who come just a little bit earlier. Uh, for as far as I know right now, those are all the announcements. Anyone have any other announcement? If not, then we want to receive our morning tithes and offerings, so we'll ask our ushers to come at this time. Brother, let's see, Brother Carlos. Mm-hmm. You want to have to pass that back here too? Did anybody got any money? <laughs> Do what now? Yeah, we. I may have to pass that back there. Lead us in prayer, Brother Carlos. Jim Proctor. <laughs> 
Yes, Anyone else have a birthday this week? Sister Lowell. Lowell, Sister Lowell, Lowell, you got a birthday? You got a birthday? Yeah, I can't mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> so you erase yours and laugh there? Well, we'll sing to her anyway. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Many more birthdays to you. Many more birthdays to you. Many more birthdays, God bless you. Many more birthdays to you. Happy birthday to you. Jim and Sister Lola and any others that had a birthday this past year. I, I'll, I'll get them all one. Okay, okay uh, Sister uh, Judy. If our choir will stand this one. Yeah, yeah, tell us what we're going to do and that's this, what we'll do. This is an impromptu performance. Yeah. Uh, but we, we sung this song several times in the past <coughs> and I love this song because it makes you feel so happy when you sing it. And I told them not to sing on the verse, but if y'all feel led to sing on the verse, just sing. I love that second verse. Now I'm a child with a heavenly home. Amen. My holy father has made me his own. And I'm cleansed by his blood and I'm clothed in his love. And someday I'll sing with the angels above. And if that don't make you happy this morning, Amen. I don't think nothing will make you happy. Lord. Okay. Mine. <coughs> Yeah. 
Thank each one of you for your participation. I love that song, and we have sang it before, and that's a wonderful, wonderful song. Uh, if you have your Bibles this morning, turn with us, if you would, to the book of Acts. Turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter 15. The book of Acts, chapter 15. <clears throat> I want to share a thought with you this morning. Three things that are so very, very important. Fairly elementary, but yet very, very uh, important. One verse. Notice, if you would, verse 11. Sort of says it all. Verse 11, chapter 15 of the book of Acts. Notice. But we believe that through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they, or in the same manner as they. Father, we appreciate that wonderful song that we were able to share together this morning. Beautiful song. And any time you sing about the Lord and any time you sing about heaven, it's beautiful and we're thankful for that. We're thankful for this little little gift the children gave to us. It's precious. means so much to us uh, this morning. We just love all those little children that come and uh, we have children and we, we've always loved children in the Christian way and uh, been very respected knowing that one day when we step off of this, this stage of life and find young people like this that will be taking our places and they'll be filling the pulpits, they'll be taking their rightful role as various uh, functions and jobs within the church and it's good that we have folks that love children who can help them prepare when that time comes. Now as we take a few minutes and break the bread of life, I pray the thought that you've given to us would be beneficial and helpful to all those that are gathered in this place. We'll be careful to thank you for it. In Jesus' name and amen. I want to share a thought with you this morning on the grace of God. And I want us to look at that verse one more time because it sums up so wonderfully uh, the true way that a person can be saved. He says, but we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall, not maybe, possibly, we shall be saved even as they. In, in other words, what, where this is taking place is what is called in chapter 15, the Jerusalem Council. If you remember back, we had this in Sunday school some time back. If you remember back in chapter 10, Peter had brought a group of people to a Gentile centurion's house, a soldier. And uh, he was a Roman centurion, if you remember. Well, he got saved. In fact, the men that Peter you know, brought with him, they got saved too. Gentile people were getting saved. But it caused a little problem uh, because, you know, the Jews sort of felt like that this was for them and them only because at this time Gentiles were an outcast sort of kind of people and they wanted to exclude the Gentiles whereby that they would not be able to uh, uh, be part of the, of the plan of salvation, you know. So uh, the primary speakers here at this council, when they had this meeting and they get together, is Peter, Paul, Barnabas, and James. They were the primarily four speakers as the God's people met Jew and others to get together and try to solve this problem because Gentiles was getting saved, uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, and so forth and all. So they, in verse 7 through 9, uh, you know, Peter begins uh, by relating how God had clearly saved Cornelius and other Gentiles with him apart from any works of the law. They simply just got saved by grace through faith, you see. Now, we see that in verse 7 through 9. But then when we come to where we're at in our text this morning, in fact, Peter acknowledges that not only do Gentiles not need to become like Jews to be saved, but conversely, the Jew, because Peter was a Jew, needed to be saved as the Gentiles had been saved. 
by grace through faith, and God will add the rest. So this brings us primarily, though, to our text that we read to you that we want to read one more time. Underline that in your Bible. It's very important. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. So I want to give you three things to think of this morning. First of all, dearly beloved, we are saved by grace. Now you think about that. We are saved by grace. You know, it's amazing, and maybe I don't know at what point in your life that you got saved. You might have been a child. You might have been older. Uh, In my case, I was 29 years old. But when I got saved, like so many, I just came to the altar, confessed the fact that I was a sinner, and by faith I trusted Jesus Christ. I I didn't know about all these uh, various teachings and doctrinal truth. I just knew that I was a sinner, and I knew that I was deep in sin, and I had heard the gospel message. I believed that Jesus Christ was the Son of God like so many of you. And I confessed the fact that I had sinned. And by faith, I trusted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Simon, C, uh, Simon Peter here, I like to put it this way. He puts it so nicely. The Jews must be saved in exactly the same way that those Gentiles were saved back in Acts chapter 10. Cornelius and the Gentiles he brought with him they got saved. They, they believed that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. They believed that Jesus Christ was God's son. And by faith, they trusted him for salvation. And when they did this, if you remember, the Holy Ghost came upon them within them. In fact, at that time, they gave utterance with the unknown language, for example, which was to assign to unbelievers that surely the gospel had even come upon uh, Gentile people. So, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, that at this time, Peter probably didn't eat pork at this time, but it implies to us he was not saved because he didn't eat pork, but he was saved because he had trusted Jesus Christ uh, and he was saved uh, by the grace of God. Turn in your Bibles, if you would, to Ephesians chapter 2 for a moment. Ephesians chapter 2, and I want to read this lengthy passage to you as we look at it together. You see, there are all kinds of uh, uh, beliefs, this, that, and the other out there, but this is the way it is. When Walter Cronkite, years ago, the old newscaster, you say when he finished his news report, and he say, well, this is the way it is. Well, that's the way it is. Chapter 2 of Ephesians, uh, listen to verse 1. And you hath he quickened, that word in the Greek means made alive. You hath he made alive who were dead in trespasses and in sins. Where in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of of wrath, even as others. In other words, he just simply making a statement, there was a time when all of us walked according to the course of this world. We were dead in trespass and sin. We were walking around breathing God's good air alive, but we were dead spiritually to the things of the Lord through Jesus Christ, uh, God's Son. He says in verse 4, But God, I like this, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin. Notice there's that word again, hath made alive. Notice, quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. And hath raised us up together and made us set together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith. Notice, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So the basic 
doctrinal or teaching message of the church is based simply on the word of God as laid down by the apostles and the Holy Spirit saw to its perfection. We're saved by grace. I love that passage. Someday, out in eternity, before the very throne of God, there will be countless millions of people who came to a place in their life like you did, like I did. We saw ourselves as God saw us. We were lost. See? We were dead. We were spiritually alienated from God, not by distance, but by sin. And we made the all-important decision to trust Jesus Christ by the unmerited favor of God, which is grace. And you know, this is just me. The Bible doesn't say that per se. But I've always thought somewhere out there, there'll be countless millions of people by faith in what Jesus Christ did on the cross at Calvary, the unmerited favor of God, the grace of God have been saved. Jesus Christ can rise <clears throat> from his seat beside God the Father and he can say, Father, I died for all of them that he might show Notice what that verse said, his exceeding riches. He can show, don't need to, but he can. All of these, I died. That's wonderful, folks. You know what? You know we sing that old song, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. One day, just a little while, uh, we're going to either walk through the door of death or Jesus Christ is coming back. Sometime only known to God in heaven, the great roll book of heaven is going to be scrolled and read out. And I pray that your name will be there. You see, dearly beloved, we're not saved because we have money. We're not saved because we have prestige. We're not saved because we have power. <clears throat> we're not saved because we're good people. We're saved because of the grace of God, which is the unmerited favor of God. We couldn't buy it. We couldn't earn it. <clears throat> no way we could glean it. The only way we could be saved was personally, individually, confess the fact that we're lost and by faith trust Jesus Christ as our personal Savior <clears throat> and our way home. So we are saved by grace. But let me say you something else. Not only are we saved by grace, there's another step. <laughs> I remember something the preacher told me when I got saved. I didn't even have a Bible. He said, now, Brother Tom, you, you're saved. And he explained that to the grace of God, of course. But now, you don't want to stop here. You want to move on. You have to stand in that grace. Every day of our life, we have to stand uh, in that grace. You know, the Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter 5 and verse 2, it says, by whom... That's a pronoun referring to Jesus Christ. The Bible says, by whom also we have access by faith into what? Into this grace wherein we stand. See? We're standing this morning, you see, and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Every day of our life, we stand uh, for something. We stand for our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ, because we have been justified by faith, remember, it was God's doing, not ours. He done all the work through his son on the cross at Calvary, and all it remains for us to do is by faith, trust that grace. Again, the unmerited favor of God. Our standing <clears throat> is peace with God. Man and God are at peace because we've been saved by grace, and we stand in that grace. Paul writing to the Romans said again, by whom also we have access uh, by faith. We stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. <clears throat> Think about that. Who was delivered for our offenses, raised again for our justification. Therefore being justified uh, by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Well, that's a wonderful thing when you stop and think about it. Listen, folks, we're just pilgrims. We're just sojourners. We're just passing through this life. One day, known only to God, we'll walk through the door of death 
The only hope we have, we've heard, you've heard me say this, is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. If he comes, the rapture, then we'll all, every born again child of God worldwide will be lifted. We can join hands in the glory of God, be lifted, changed in a moment of twinkling of an eye, and step inside the beautiful expanse, that great celestial city we call heaven. And live there forever and forever, free of the sickness, sorrow, suffering, pain, and difficulties that we have in this life. But every day of our life, we stand in, uh, in, in the Lord, you know. But it doesn't stop there. Something that really helped me, and I hope something that will really help you. Not only are we saved by grace, we stand by grace. But dearly beloved, we are now to do something. We are to grow uh, in, in grace. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 18 says, But grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. We grow in the Lord. Could you just stop a minute and think? Call time out. We well, say in Bulga, call time out, you know, and think how far you've come. How much you've learned. I dare say this morning, if, if we go back and think how far we've come, in growing in the Lord. How, how, when you got saved, how much did you know about the Bible? Maybe if you was a, a youth and maybe if you was in Sunday school and like in our youth program downstairs, you probably learned a lot about the Lord, you know. But if you've been saved a long period of time like many of us have, you stop and think how far you've come. Boy, I go back to a little town called Cary Lee, North Carolina, where I was saved. Didn't have a Bible. You've heard me say, didn't even own a Bible. But you know, I got saved. I, I, I believed the message the preacher preached, confessed my sins, by faith trusted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Listen, I was saved by grace. I rose from that place, standing in that grace. And every day of my life since, I have been standing in that grace. And now I've been growing in grace. I know a lot more now than I did then. I didn't even know John 3.16 was in the Bible. Everybody don't know John 3.16, you know. I didn't know anything. I, listen, I was green as a gourd, dumb as a stick horse. I didn't know anything. But yea, now looking back all these years, I think of how much I have grown in the Lord. I've grown so much in the Lord. I have learned so much about the Word of God. I've learned so much to know what I have awaiting for me beyond this present life in a wonderful home called heaven. This is not our final home. We're sojourners. We're just passing through. We're just taking this little time here in this life, and here pretty soon it'll all be over. And then where are you going to be? You've got to stand before God and give an account. And boy, listen, if you will stand, listen, in the grace of God, listen, and stand and grow in the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a difference it'll make in your life. And I want to challenge you, maybe <clears throat> sometime today through the week, think about how far you've come, how much you've learned. I guess say some of these children here have learned a lot about the Bible, about the Lord. And boy, I, I respect them and appreciate them for, for what they're learning because they probably don't realize as much now as it will later on. You know, when you're older and you're mature and the tough times come in life, and they will come if the Lord tarries is coming, they've got a foundation that they can stand on, and that is our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. You know, Paul wrote to the Ephesians in chapter 4 and verse 15. He said, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. We've grown up. Listen, you take... When a baby is born into this world, you, you don't give that baby a T-bone steak and tater and, and a toss salad. I don't believe he can digest that now. That baby's got to grow. Uh, you know, he's uh, laying in that bed, and after a while he starts crawling. Pretty soon he's pulling up, you know, and uh, first thing you know, he's not eating, drinking just milk. He's eating baby food, and then later on, and he, his digestive system is growing and developing where he can handle things like this. But in the meantime, he's growing. You and I went through that stage. Our parents probably could <clears throat> remember all of that, you know. But nonetheless, we growed up. Today we're grown up individuals. And it's the same spiritually speaking. You know, Peter reminded us that we're babes in Christ. Boy, I got up. I never knew that. I got up from that altar that night. And according to the Bible, I was just, you know, Philip, I was just a baby in Christ. I didn't know nothing. 
Do you have a Bible? How many of you have been in that category? But now tonight or today, I look back over these 40 plus years, I've learned a lot. I've grown up a lot. I, I, I'm eating T-bone steak and uh, taters and uh, the whole nine yards now where I was just drinking milk back when I was a baby in Christ. I've learned. I've learned because I have listened to the Word of God. I've learned because I have read the Word of God. I was doing that, you know, before I answered the call uh, to preach. I was following up and growing in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, that is so important. Stop and think again. May I challenge this morning? Stop and think how far you have come since you've been saved. But folks, we're not home yet. You know that? Listen, you've grown in truth. You've grown in love. You've grown in teaching, doctrine. You've grown in Christian living. You've grown in your conduct. See, you grow in your Christian life when you apply these principles. See? Many of you have applied those principles in your life. You're here today. You'll be here tonight. You'll be here Wednesday night. You'll be here, you know, when the doors are open. And I know everybody has sickness. Sometimes there's death. Things, you know, work, you can't come. But generally speaking, you'll be here. Why? Because you have grown up in the Lord. You're no longer, you know, got a pacifier in your mouth. You're no longer drinking out of a baby bottle. Now you're eating good, strong, solid food. You've grown up in the Lord, spiritually speaking, you know. And it makes all the difference, all the difference, you know, uh, in the world. I'm amazed at how people uh, can get saved and grow. You see, we're saved by grace. We stand in grace and we grow in grace. And we have all come a long, long way. Now, I want to challenge you again. Don't be repetitious. You think how far you've come. You may not be a, a read a Bible every day, but you've been in church. You know, I've had several people saved that couldn't read and write, but they could hear. The Bible says, so if then faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, you wouldn't think that, but there are still people in our society that are illiterate. I know two elderly people whom I won to the Lord from Harlan, Kentucky. Uh, precious people. And I witnessed to them, they said, but we can't read. I said, that's all right, I'll read it to you. You know, and I shared it with them. Remember, faith comes by hearing, hearing. I said, but you got two, good Lord gave you two ears, you can hear. And they heard and they got saved. Right. Bobby, I remember old Uncle Tom over at Oak Grove. You know, he couldn't read and write. One of my deacons who couldn't read and write. We have prayer meeting on Sunday evening, Aunt May, we call everybody Aunt Uncle. Aunt May would get up and read a parable or something. Uncle Tom jump up and explain it. You know, he had been listening all those years to the Word of God. He had two ears. Maybe he couldn't read, couldn't read the Bible, but he could hear, and he applied it. And Aunt May would read the Scripture. He'd get up and, uh, and this boy, would do a good job too. He it come right out of his heart, uh, you know. So, folks, may I say to you, I look at you this morning, every one of you. And Mo, I think most of you all have, if you think about it, have come a long way. We've grown a long, long way uh, in the Lord from the time when we first got saved to where we're at now. So if you don't have a Bible, get you a Bible. Read that Bible. Listen, a verse or two a day will help keep the devil away. The Word of God, you know, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. Because, dearly beloved, we're saved by grace, we stand in that grace, and we grow in that grace. And if you're here this morning and you've never been saved, God can do for you what I never, I would say, listen, if I could and you need to be saved, I'd save every one of you just one stroke like that. I don't have that power. But I do know the Word, I know what it teaches. And I know the Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Where his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. I know this much, that if you're honest with God, we know God's honest. He'll save you. If you'll come on the terms of the gospel, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ as set forth in the word of God, confessing the fact that you're a son of by faith, trust Jesus Christ, I'll tell you what you'll do. You'll be saved and leave here a brand new boy, girl, mama, dad in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. While our song leader, pianist, comes, we'll sing a couple of verses of an old invitational hymn of what the Lord lays on our brother's heart. This morning, if you've never been saved, the grace of God is available. The grace of God is available. You can be saved this morning if you'd like to be saved. If there's one boy, one girl, one mama, one dad, would you come this morning? 
remembering that God loves you far better than even your parents could love you. I believe that every parent would be willing to do everything they could for any one of their children. But when you come right down to the bottom line, there's one aspect that we can't do, and it is to save our children, spiritually speaking, so they can go to heaven. We can explain the word. We can give the plan of salvation. We can do the best that we know how. But God's given to each one of us a free will to accept or to reject. The wonderful grace of God. Oh, thank the Lord. We're saved by grace. We stand in grace. And we grow in grace. God, help us and teach us those instructions. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. What page, my brother? 483. 483. Be standing as we sing together. 483. If you need prayer, you come. I surrender all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily. If you surrender to him, if you make peace with God, you make peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you've never made peace with God, this will be a good morning to do that. You know where you stand with the Lord. As we sing the second, third, and fourth verse, would you come? I surrender humbly at His feet. I bow. Early pleasures all forsaken. Take me, Jesus, take me. He'll do that for you. Listen, God loves you this morning. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that His love and believe in Him should not perish but have eternal everlasting life. You'll come to Him by faith, believing. Trust Him, you can be saved. We sing the third and fourth verse. All to Jesus. Make me save your holy vines. What a line. Let me feel the Holy Spirit. Truly know that thou art mine. Will you come? I'm going to ask Brother Snook Sister Sue to sing that last verse in just a moment. But if you're here this morning and you've been thinking about being saved and you've never followed up and been saved, I'd like for you to come this morning and be saved while you have an opportunity. Just remember this. God loves you this morning. God loves you so much this morning. He gave so much that you might be set free from the bondage of sin. And if you need to be saved, you come. Now, Father... As Brother Snooks and Sister Sue sing the last verse of this, this uh, wonderful old hymn, I Surrender All, I trust and pray that if there's any here today that's never surrendered all, that they'd make that decision this morning. God bless and we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Snooks, Sister Sue. Oh, Think about it. Give myself to you. Yes. I surrender all. Would you come this morning and make peace with God? The Bible says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. close the invitation here because we said we would after they say God bless each of you for being here today and have a, a good afternoon and do remember our mission service tonight if you've never uh, heard Amy and Aaron I know you'll enjoy them they had a good and wonderful program the last time they was here and I'm looking forward to seeing them again tonight by the way for those of you who don't know Aaron's from Germany 
Only Bill can pronounce his last name. I believe over there we tried to figure that out. But uh, he just became a citizen of America this week. Came the right way. Went through all you have to go through. He's now a citizen of, of America. And they're hopeful to go back to Africa, maybe not too distant future, and be able to continue tremendous ministry there. Well, let's be dismissed from this place, certainly not from his presence. Brother Snooks, lead us in prayer. Lord, we thank you today for the many blessings. We thank you, beloved, and secure and glory. Yeah. Thank you for the message today. And Lord, we pray today for the many ones on the prayer list that you'll meet each need that they have. Yeah. Be with each thing and said and done that your name can be lifted up and glorified. Be with us as we leave this place, go to his respected home. Forgive us for failure. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Hey there, bud. Thank <laughs> you.